lot of you have asked to uh, see just how I installed the two-way radios that I've been talking about in uh, The Beast, our uh, new Ford 350 that we used to tow the, our Montana fifth wheel. So I'm about ready to go have stuff installed this morning, and uh, I'll uh, try and document as much of that as I can. Sometimes, you know, uh, auto shops don't let you shoot everything they're doing inside there for insurance reasons. This is where the antenna mounts will go over the rear light in the back of the cab. And I've got all my stuff laid out here. Uh, the antennas. This is the rear mount. There's the cable for it. This is the part that goes uh, over the light. Uh, there's sets, it's set for two antennas. Uh, and then uh, my radio is here. There's my radio. And some extensions for the microphone cord. There's a speaker. Uh, we're also uh, going to hook up uh, the uh, GM RS radio that I've been using for some time. Uh, it's all using, I'm just using a cigarette lighter adapter for it now. Uh, here's the GM RS radio right there. I've got it tucked inside there. Uh, and I'm going to have them mount my uh, dash cam a little better. I'd like to tidy up these wires. I don't want to see those. So uh, we're going to see how all that works. And, um, and then we'll give it a couple of tests. But uh, I want to have this installed in a neat way. Uh, I think I could do it, but I'm not familiar with taking trim off. These guys do this every day, and I want this to be a nice professional looking installation. Make sense? There we go. Yeah, that's the part that... In all, it took about four and a half hours to install all of the system, and I'm so glad that I had this done professionally. Not that I don't think any of it is too hard, but if you're not familiar with removing trim and putting it back on, it, it, it can be, you can make a mess out of, uh, out of your vehicle. And I'm so glad I had the folks at Auto Trim do this for me. So the first thing was the antenna. Here they are. It is all mounted. Uh, this is that plate I showed you. And uh, you pop off the light. You put that behind it. This is metal. This gives you a ground. And I had, uh, the one I have has space for two antennas. This one is my UHF VHF amateur radio antenna. And... Uh, this is what I will use for all of that. And on this one, this is my GMRS antenna. And uh, that one is, uh, gives it some height as well. You can see it's over the, the cab. Uh, today's trucks are a challenge. These used to be metal. Now they're fiberglass or they're, uh, they're just lightweight. And there's, it's, you, you need to have a connection to metal, a ground. And that's why this mount from bulletproof is so good it has a very expensive mount the antennas need some spacing between the two of them so they don't interfere and this is adequate at the frequencies that that they're at they're both at fairly high frequencies um, but uh, it, it's great you can see i have some height uh, so even when i have the fifth wheel attached which is about this high here behind it it's still going to be able to get out and do some uh, some work uh, I'm very pleased with these antennas and of course uh, I can screw off the base and take them off when I have to do um, you know a car wash or something like that if I send it through a car wash. Alright but the big challenge with this was um, this coax cables on both of these antennas and we had to get the coax down into the vehicle itself so they could attach to the radios. And let's show you how that worked. Alright in the back seat this is where the coax came through and uh, we just uh, tucked it in behind the headliner and it came down here uh, into this panel. They removed these panels and the headliner and it ran down into here. And here is where we mounted the radio. And you can see there's where they, it came through. We drilled a little hole here in this storage compartment 
and this is my Yesu uh, FTM 400 uh, this is a UHF VHF uh, transceiver uh, it has I think uh, 50 watts output um, and it is mounted there's a mounting bracket there you can see that's nice and solid now the problem so here's the antenna cable um, the problem is uh, I want to I need to have a speaker an external speaker is uh, without an external speaker the radio speakers back here and I'm up front so uh, we had to run an external speaker and uh, then there's the microphone cable. The microphone cable uh, plugs in here. There's also a head, uh, and it is a uh, separate head for this radio, a control head. So we had to have cables to control the head and uh, cables to control the microphone. And those we ran all the way around and underneath the seats. Pardon all the dog hair, that's from Bo. And up to the front so I'll show you how that all works out so the head cable came up here we again removed some of these panels and we remount we mounted the head with a suction cup right there in the lower left part of the windshield and that's where um, I can see it as I'm driving it doesn't interfere with anything uh, and it works great the uh, microphone for the radio is right here uh, we ran the cable underneath uh, the seat and it's uh, this is the extended cable uh, the extended microphone cable and uh, then we have the speaker mounted right here it's nice and snug and secure so I can hear the speaker and it doesn't bother the passenger now the other radio that I have is a GMRS radio and that doesn't have as many uh, bells and whistles. We didn't have an extended head or any of that stuff. All the controls for that radio are in the microphone. This is the Midland radio, and this is where all of the controls are for it. Uh, you can see uh, the volume control and all that, and the speaker is also there. So we just had to run uh, the coaxial cable underneath the flooring, underneath the seat, uh, ran it up through here. We fused it. There's a uh, plenty of fuses here and then this radio is mounted and tucked in right there. Now I need to get a couple of microphone clip hangers but for now we've got them there. So that's how we mounted the radios. So how did we hook up power? Well we did that directly uh, to the battery and uh, there is a little grommet that comes through uh, from under here and we pop that out just to get the wires through and there's the wires I don't know if you can see them tucked in there and uh, we made a direct connection to the battery and all of it is of course fused again as we said from the front we ran the power connections here they're all zip tied tightly here they're all protected in a little covering and we hooked them directly up there. Again, they're fused, direct connection to the battery and the ground. But I really appreciate the way that we carefully zip tied that connection all the way down. Hope you can see that. Just a really solid connection. So there's the ground right there. So we have full power for it, uh, all fused, neatly done. Now you can see why I had this professionally done. Uh, it really is is a major uh, major draw <laughs> for me. I would have made I could have made it work, I think, but uh, doing it professionally and safely, you don't want to mess around with with power uh, for the protection of the radios and protection of you when you're hooking it up. So um, I really recommend that. How do you find somebody like that? Well, uh, these guys were recommended by the people I bought my truck from. Um, they're in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, auto trim group. I'll put a link in the description. I didn't get any special pricing or anything, but they just did really good work. Uh, in your area, if you need to get professional help done on putting those things in, sometimes a stereo shop because they are used to going in and hooking up power uh, and all that. That will help you as well. I also had them uh, wire up my um, dash cam so that I'm not using a cigarette lighter for the dash cam. The dash cam, as soon as I turn the ignition on, the dash cam starts. I don't have to think about it. All right, and you can see the radio's working. 
So one of the nice things I like about this radio is uh, when you use digital communications over UHF, is it'll show you how far the stations are apart from you. For example, um, there's a couple guys talking on this repeater right now. Uh, this was Andy, who was 58 miles from me. And uh, the other guy's coming on now. And, okay, well, and I'm, he is I'm 130 Michigan, miles from me. Miles south of um, so he's on the other side of the state of Michigan. And he's 130.3 miles from me. Maybe that's a different story, how I use UHF, VHF, and GMRS as I drive down the road. That's topic for yet another <laughs> conversation about two-way radio. I'm a big believer in having two-way radios for RVers, uh, particularly the GMRS. You do need a license for it. Uh, it's a little higher quality than the old CBs and the little uh, handy walkie-talkies that we uh, all use. And they're good to have, these little walkie-talkies. They really are. Everybody should have a couple of those. But um, having the, the, the more powerful GMRS radio is really a nice thing to, uh, that I would recommend. Uh, we need to set up a national calling frequency for GMRS so RVers can, can talk to other RVers. But uh, um, meantime, there's plenty of uses for it. So we'll do a whole story on that if you're interested in it uh, in a future episode. But a lot of you want to see how we finally ended up with the radios and the antennas mounted. And now you know. I hope you like this. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to uh, subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. I'm Mike. Thanks for watching. And as Jennifer always says, happy trails.